Hey, hey, you guys. Okay, it's been a hot minute since I've been on here. Um, if you have been following my stories at all, um, y'all know that I have been painting with my mom. Thank God for her. Um, I've been painting my entire downstairs, and I mean, it's been crazy town around here. Um, so I'm super excited to be on with you guys. I thought it would be kind of fun to play like y'all remember um, when we were kids and we would play the whole um, red light green light game of like stop start stop start. I thought that would be super fun for a topic because that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Um, so if you are watching this live, just say hi. Facebook is being a little wonky lately where I can't like actually see who's watching unless you say something. So say hi if you're catching the replay. I know in the beginning, I always like to say hi to people on replay because y'all get like from the beginning. So hello to those of you on replay. Hey, Peggy. Um, for those of you who are new to my videos, type new below, especially if you're watching on replay. I'd love to give you a shout out and say hi. So here's what I want to share. Um, this morning I got a, um, and I, I, I've watched this before. I've watched this actually several times. Um, but I saw a video by Bishop T.D. Jakes and Hey Angel, uh, it, y'all, it was so good. Like B Bishop T.D. Jakes is like, if, if y'all don't watch his videos, you need to subscribe and like find him on YouTube. It was so good. And here's what I love. Like, no matter what your background or your religion or anything like that, um, I feel like when you can tap into people's, other people's wisdom, um, beliefs at that point, your spiritual beliefs, your religious beliefs, don't really, it, it does, I don't wanna say it doesn't matter, but I'm saying you can get great nuggets of wisdom, of life, and you can implement that into your business, hopefully, no matter who you're hearing it from, right? So I, I, Jesus is my homeboy. I'm a born again Christian. However, I learned from a lot of other people, um, like secular, you know, secular t trainers and teachers and stuff like that. Anyway, so I love listening to um, Bishop T.D. Jakes and y'all. Today I listened to one. I'll have to share it down in the comments um, later after this is over, but he uh, this video was like an hour. I'll share it. Y'all have to make time to watch it. And I'm going to share a couple things, a couple nuggets that I picked up from that video that I just had to share with you guys. I've been like chomping at the bit. I've been super busy today. I just got off a team Zoom um, mastermind with my group um, today and kind of like lit up the Zoom on fire. And I was still like feeling the flames um, from it tonight. So I was like, oh, I have to get on here and share some of this awesomeness. Um, okay. So I'm actually sharing this out to my page too, but here's the deal. All right, so I wanna share a couple things and I titled this like red light, green light. So if you um, probably are a child of the 80s, I don't know that it may be like since before then, but when I was a kid at recess, we used to play this game called red light, green light. And basically it's all the kids line up in a big group and someone in charge basically tells you red light and you would stop green light and you would go, right? So I felt like it would be fun to do that network marketing edition. There are some things that I've learned in my experience of almost 20 years in this business. I have crushed it and been at the top, been like founding 12, advisory council, blah, 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 the trips and the trophies and the titles and blah, blah. And I've also been like a complete loser as well in this industry. Sometimes it depends like a phase of life, right? Like I've been at this for almost 20 years. Sometimes, honestly, I'm like, if you're with me, it can depend on the month. <laughs> it can depend on the quarter. It can depend on the week, right? Like it honestly, it can depend on the hour where you feel like I'm totally crushing this. I was born for this. Everybody should do this. I'm the bomb. And then like the very next hour, you could feel like, oh, this sucks. Like I just am blowing it. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, um, right? So. One of the things that I really picked up from the video um, that I watched this morning was, and this I talk about this a lot in terms of network marketing, my, I, my heart is I want to encourage people to keep going because, I mean, in reality, like I talk about this a lot too, that I feel like if you're in business for yourself and you're an entrepreneur, 
Um, it is very similar to, I've, I've been married for 25 years. We've been together since I was 15 years old. Y'all, that's a lot of life. I mean, I'm 42. <laughs> There's a lot of life and a lot of growing that happens between when you meet somebody when you're 15 years old and growing up, right? And you've got along the path, very similar to your business, you have decisions to make, right? You can choose to either grow with something or you can choose, I'm growing apart from this, okay? And a lot of times it takes a very conscious decision. We have been at a place in our marriage over the last 25 years where, quite frankly, things were looking like this. Like we were splitting apart, growing apart. And it required multiple times over our T marriage over our time together that we had to consciously make a decision to either come back together or to call it quits. And so I feel like um, there's a huge correlation between entrepreneurialism, I don't even know if that's a word, um, and marriage. I feel like they definitely have some parallels. So when I was listening to this video this morning um, from TD Jake's I'm going to have to share it with you guys. I'll put it I'll put it down here in the comments. Oh, thank you so much, Amber. Yes, that is totally my age. <laughs> um anyway, so one of the things that I learned um from that video, I was like it, parts of me was like, "Oh, this is so good for training my team." Um and to share with you guys. And oh, this is so applicable to marriage and to relationships. So I thought, I'm going to come on here and we're going to play red light green light for a second. Um, so those of you that are just now hopping on, be sure to say hi, comment below. Well, I want to say hi to you. Facebook is doing weird things lately where I haven't been able to see actually who's watching to say, uh, say hi to you guys. Um, and if you're new to my videos, type new below. Share this out. If you have people, let's just say if you have people on your following or people on your friends list who maybe they're entrepreneurs, people who are in direct sales, people who are in network marketing, this is completely generic. No company names or anything like that are going to be mentioned. But I feel like this would be relevant to them and if you do happen to pass this along let me know that too so I can say thank you um hey guys hey Ann hey Becky hey Lulu oh I love it okay great so the first thing that I learned from the video from TD Jakes today was big in big out a lot of people and again this is like your business your relationship a lot of people expect big withdrawals they expect somebody to give them more, somebody to make more deposits into them than they are making into it, right? Or into your relationship. So what I've noticed as far as like business goes, a lot of people want the check. A lot of people want to be debt free. You wanna pay off your student loans. You wanna take family vacations. You wanna give your kids the life that you didn't have. You wanna move out of your zip code. Um, right? You want to be financially secure. You want the community. You want the products for free. But that's the, that's the withdrawal you're expecting to make, okay? But big in, big out, meaning are you making the kind of deposits into your business that will match what you're wanting to withdraw? So one of the things that he said was so bountifully, reap bountifully, so sparingly, reap sparingly. How many times have you seen people show up in business and they sign up and that's the easy part. Saying the yes is the easy part, am I right? Getting into a relationship is the easy part. Keeping it going once it gets challenging, once you get that first no, once you get that first objection, once you hit that first hurdle, that's when it gets where, okay, you gotta make some decisions, right? Same thing like in your relationship. Over time, if you're in a long-term relationship, you're going to find it easy in the honeymoon phase. That's when they're like, oh, they brought me flowers. Oh, they're taking me to the carnival, right? That's, it's the honeymoon phase. Then, kinda, you know, I don't know, it gets, the, you get in the same routine, you get in a rut. Then you start having expectations of what you see on social media. You see so-and-so doing such and such. You see that on TV. You see this on this reality show. Oh, on that person's Instagram. You see all that. And then you start looking to make those same withdrawals out of your own relationship, but you haven't done the deposits yet. 
So one of the things that I love that he said, and he was talking about your life, your relationships, but I think it's applicable to your business too, is when you want to withdraw big from your business, whatever your goals are, like what are your goals? Are you wanting vacations, financial freedom, whatever it is that you're wanting from your, from your business, are you depositing big into your business too? So red light, green light, this may ruffle some feathers and I apologize in advance, kinda sorry, not sorry, but here are some things that I want you to consider. These are rhetorical questions that honestly, if you're in business like long term, you're gonna have to ask yourself this over and over and over and over, sometimes even hourly. You're gonna have to maybe even put these on a post-it note and stick it next to your monitor, stick it on your bathroom mirror, wherever it is that you need to see it, ask yourself. I asked my team this today on our mastermind Zoom and it was like, ooh, some, I saw some light bulbs go off. You know how you can like look at people's faces and you see like <laughs> the light bulb dings? Okay, number one, I hope this doesn't ruffle some feathers, but kind of, I hope that it kind of like kicks you in the gut just a little bit. One, are you proof that your business or your products actually work? Are you proof, you? not the stories on your company fan page, not the pictures that are submitted to your the, the Facebook group that you're in, not your upline story, not your sideline story. Are you, you, are you proof that your products and your business work? You. There's a lot of people who wanna make the withdrawal from their business, but they're not making the deposit into their business. Do you see? Two. Question number two, and this is like, this is some tough love y'all. And this is something that you're going to have to totally check yourself. If you are not where you want to be yet, ask yourself these questions. Are you proof when someone looks at you? Are you proof that your products and your business actually work? Okay. Number two, would you sign up with you? Y'all that's a big one. So I will, I'll, I'll phrase it this way. If the CEO of your company, or your sponsor or your upline or whoever you have a lot of respect for, if they followed you around all day today, what would they see you doing? Are you taking your products the right way? Are you taking your products but then sabotaging your products? Like if you're in a health and wellness company, are you taking your products and then you turn around and eat those donuts and ding dongs and Pepsi and carbs and sugar and candy? Are you doing all that? Oh, you're taking your products, but are you proof that they actually work? If your CEO followed you around all day today, are you a product of your product? Are you a product of your business? Would they see you reaching out to people? Or are you just slapping up a post on Facebook and you're not doing anything in the DM? I will tell you right now, y'all that are in network marketing, your business does not grow on your timeline. Your business grows in the direct messages and the text messages and the phone calls and the heart to heart conversations that you're having one on one asking them, what do you need? What do you want? How can I help? It does not happen on your timeline. Your, mark that down, write that down. Your business will not grow on your timeline. Your business grows when you get out of your head and you get into your heart. So let's play a little bit of red light, green light, shall we? Okay. Red light, stop playing small. One of the things that I told my team today, and I'm always really super vulnerable and super open with my, with my team. Um, we have a mastermind every week and I just kind of like open up the vault, y'all. There's like 20 years of experience and the, I have been really awful at this business for probably like the first eight years <laughs> of my business. And I don't say like awful, but that's, that's my perspective, right? Here's the thing that I do want to, before we start the whole red light, green light, I want to encourage you with um, what you expect out of yourself and your own business, even if you're not meeting your expectations yet, even if you haven't hit your goals yet, you probably still have more than someone else has right now. What you have right now is probably something that someone somewhere is praying for right now. They wish they just had one customer. They wish they only had one promoter on their team, one team member. They wish that they've only earned the car bonus once ever. You guys, stop being so hard on yourself, okay? But that said, 
stop playing small. Stop using the excuse of it's good enough. I'm content with what I have. I should be grateful for what I have. Yes, you should, but that's not a reason to play small, right? So I shared with my team today, when I first started in business, we, I was with a direct sales company. Um, I was selling like cookware and, and stuff like that. Um, and we used to have team meetings, like this was before the day and age of like Facebook Lives and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. We used to have team meetings like in my sponsor's living room, okay? And back then, I was not, not ashamed, but not happy with where I was so far in that business. And I literally remember going to the meeting and being like, I showed up. <laughs> um, going to the meeting and sitting in the very back, okay, not making eye contact with my sponsors, not participating when a question was asked to the group. I was not the one to raise my hand. I was not the one to speak up. Uh, oh, and God forbid, like if she invited her upline person to be a guest speaker or guest trainer or something. I mean, I was like not only in the back of the room, I was kind of like around the corner where I was like hiding behind the magazine. <laughs> I just, I, I was playing small. I didn't want to put myself out there because, I'll just open it up, because I was comparing myself to so-and-so. So-and-so just got her name called and she brought, got brought up to the front of the room and well, she's amazing and I, I'm not doing what she's doing and so I just need to shrink down and hide, right? Now I had all the reasons in the world. Oh, I'm new. Um, oh, I'm just back here taking notes. Oh, I've got little kids. My kids were little, they're 20 and 22 now, but at the time they were, they were little, little kids, littles. And I was like, oh, you know, if somebody needs me, I need to be at the back so I can step out if I'm needed. You know, those were the reasons that I was saying. The truth is, I wanted to shrink and be invisible. I was, I was playing small, okay? So if you're on your team trainings or team calls or your regional events or whatever, and you show up, sit in the front freaking row. Sit in the front row. There is a reason why the most successful people in your business and your company are the ones who are speaking up, speaking out, sitting in the front row, first to raise their hand, first to volunteer, first to share those tips. There's a freaking reason for it. Because those who show up, go up, stop playing small. Even if you haven't arrived yet, you have to stop playing small. Red light, stop hesitating. Paralysis analysis, analysis by paralysis, uh, is not, that's not a good trait to have. Success loves speed. Stop hesitating, stop overthinking it. The person that's on your mind that you wanna reach out to, why haven't you done it yet? Because you think, oh, it's summer, their kids are out of school, they're too busy, I'll be a burden, they're gonna say no anyways, you're prejudging. Stop it, stop hesitating. Success loves speed. That thing that you know what to do, you know what to do. You're on the internet. The world is your oyster. Information is flowing, overflowing. It's abundant. You know what to do. So do it. Stop hesitating. Seriously, stop hesitating. Stop also making excuses. Excuses will be your nemesis in this business. The excuse of, I'm really busy. It's summer. I've got the kids. Um, you know, we've just been, I don't have enough money. Money's a struggle. Um, I'm out of time. I work full time. In fact, I work two jobs. Um, whatever else excuses that you might have, right? Those will literally keep you back. I always say excuses were invented by the enemy. Take that for what you want. Those little things that get planted in your mind, those excuses or reasons why you can't, reasons why you shouldn't, reasons why you couldn't, those are planted by the enemy to keep you small. Because you know what happens when you become successful? You do big things for other people. You create a ripple effect of blessings that will impact a ton of people. Is this making sense? Share this out. Here's the thing. There are a lot of people who follow you who have no idea that there is hope. They have no idea what to do in their business. They have no idea what they're doing wrong. They have no clue. You have people on your team, in your team page, on your timeline, that are thinking of quitting right now. They're literally right now thinking of quitting. And I want to be the person who gets to message them through, through you, who gets to like send this out to their brain. Stop 
quitting. Here's the thing. This back, goes back to relating um, to marriage too. Before you quit, think about what would you do in the new thing? Let's say it's a relationship, okay? Your marriage. You're going to quit your marriage, okay? What would you do with a new relationship? What would you do differently? A lot of people, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not giving like marriage advice over here, okay? However, a lot of people, when they quit the relationship, they start a new relationship and they're like, they're back at the gym. <laughs> they lost 20 pounds. Ladies, they're like doing their makeup and getting dressed again. They're doing their hair. Um, they're not sitting around in sweatpants and a you know shirt with holes in it and their hair in a messy bun and all that kind of stuff. They're not doing that in a new relationship. They did that in their marriage. Just like, have you ever seen people when they quit their company, they quit their network marketing business, they join a new one. Now all of a sudden they're showing up awesome online. They're doing the thing. They're prospecting. They're making curiosity posts. They're doing Facebook lives. They're like a product of their product. You see them marketing and being really creative in their posts and introducing people to the product and all of that. And you're thinking to yourself, dude, if you had done that over here, you wouldn't have sucked in your business. You wouldn't have wanted to quit. Your business would be literally growing, skyrocketing. So before you quit, two things. One, consider for a second, can you start over instead without quitting? Before you quit your business, before you quit your relationship, can you just start over where you are? Can you do that? If you were the one to change, what would be different? If you just started over for right now, like would you sign up with your company again and start over? I told my team today, honestly, sometimes in your business, especially if this is a long-term thing, y'all network marketing is not a six month thing. For some people, you might see them join and then six months later, they're like, ooh, look at her, she's at the top, she's on the stage, she's got the big check, she's whatever, right? And you're like, dude, six months, I must be doing something wrong or this company must be the wrong company for me. The reality is, is that person has probably been planting those seeds. They've probably doing the big, bountiful sowing prior to them joining. And what you're seeing now is their harvest. That's what you're seeing now. So before you toss in the towel, before you quit, consider, can you just simply start over where you are? You can do that, you know? Y'all, in network marketing, you have a decision every single day that you wake up. Start your morning, take your product. Be a product of your product. Prospect. Stop focusing on the timeline. Start getting into people's hearts and their messages. Find out their source of pain. How can you help? How can you help solve their pain? Does your product, does your company have a solution to someone's need? If so, you better be reaching out to them. You're creating a ripple effect. If you're in health and wellness, if you're in skincare, if you're in makeup, if you're in a electricity, lights on, lights off kind of company, okay? What you're doing matters. You have to reach out because here's the thing. The enemy wants to make you have excuses. The enemy wants you to be small. The enemy wants you to be quiet. The enemy wants you to be busy with laundry, with dishes, with kids, with your dog, with whatever. You know why? Because the busier you are, the less you're going to work your business. The less you work your business, the less of a blessing you're going to create, the less of a ripple effect you will create, and the less big things you can do to help other people all around the world. I'm not talking about like one person being able to pay off their credit card. I mean, that's awesome. But I'm talking about like big things, big things, contributing to charity, putting someone's, uh, like donating to someone's liver transplant, whatever. Y'all, we're creating a ripple effect and you playing small doesn't serve you or anyone else, especially the people that are watching you who need you to say yes. Leadership is not about a title or a rank or a position or a check or a comma in your income check. It's not. Leadership is being willing to say yes first and to keep going when it's freaking hard. It's hard. Leadership in marriage, same thing. Y'all, a lot of marriages end. And yes, there is a reason for some marriages that need to end. I understand that. 
Many marriages though, I per this is my personal belief, don't hate. My personal belief is that a lot of relationships could be saved with a decision to just start over. Start over where you are. Be better where you are. You don't need to quit and become something brand new or start something brand new. When you can start over and, and drop the ego, <laughs> admit, I screwed this up, I'm gonna start over. Join your business all over again. Act as if. Order yourself that starter package, get that box in the mail, do a Facebook Live, an unboxing video, and be like, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, just got this product in the mail. I've heard nothing but great things about it. It's gonna do this, it's gonna do that. I'm looking for people to be accountable with me. Let's do this together. Oh, this is so awesome. Start over where you are. You don't have to quit and join something new to start over. You don't. Wake up in the morning, ladies, Take a shower, do your hair, put on a little mascara, wear something cute. I don't care if you work from home. I work from home. Y'all, I'm sitting at the computer all day. Most days, I'm like makeup and whatever, but I'm telling you what right now. You know how I've been married for 25 years? I show up for my husband. I show up. I show up for my business. I show up for my husband. When I catch myself not showing up, I start over. Please, red light, stop quitting and stop playing small green light start over where you are with what you have and do what you can with what you have you have a gift and a talent all right the next thing red light <laughs> this is so fun i feel like i'm in like third grade again okay red light stop staying stuck by yourself say that five times fast stop staying stuck by yourself if you are stuck in your business, reach up. You don't have to stay stuck. If you are stuck, if you are showing up for the trainings and you're on the Zoom and you're following the guide and you're like reading the trainings and you're doing the thing and you're still not making progress, you're stuck. Your car is hydroplaning on water, on the highway, you're not getting anywhere. Your foot is on the gas. You've got engine, and you've got gas in the tank, but you're not getting anywhere. You're stuck. Don't stay stuck by yourself. Reach up. Because if what you're doing isn't working, find help to let literally, like I tell my team, show me some screenshots of your last several messages that you're having. You're probably saying something or doing something that's not working. If you're stuck, if you're doing the thing and it's not producing results, something needs to change. Reach up. Now, excuse, warning, red light. <laughs> the enemy is gonna sit there and tell you, well, your sponsor quit. Your sponsor sucks. Like, let's face it. Your sponsor is probably not doing the thing. Your sponsor quit and they're not doing much and you know, whatever, and you're just out there all by yourself. No, you're not. If you're in network marketing, you are not by yourself ever. Odds are your sponsor has a sponsor. Your sponsor's sponsor probably has a sponsor. Go all the way up the food chain until you find someone who can tell you how to get unstuck. I promise you somebody's up there. I hear, I hear that a lot. Oh, my sponsor, blah, 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 blah. My cross line, my sideline, my team, my blah, blah. Y'all, there is always someone to help you get unstuck. Stop staying stuck by yourself. Oh my gosh, I totally thought that was gonna be a tongue twister, but practice makes perfect. Okay, the next one, red light. Y'all are not gonna like this. <laughs> Stop taking it personal. You know how I said success loves speed? When you are reaching out to somebody, you need to not be so emotionally invested in what the outcome is. Here, let me give you a sales 101 tip, okay? Your job is to invite them and expose them. Expose them and invite them. Show them what you've got, invite them to take a look. The rest of it is up to them to make a decision. Your job after that is to help them make a decision. What else do you need to know so that you can make a decision? Okay, answer that question. Now that I've answered that question, what else do you need to know to make a decision? If they're not ready yet 
They're just not ready yet. That is not your problem. Stop taking it personally when someone doesn't do the thing. Stop. Why? Why would you take blame for someone else not doing it any more than you would take all the credit for someone else who does? You would never take all the credit. Oh, look at me. They earned their car bonus. That was all me. That was all me, dude. They're up on that stage. They got the big check. All me. I'm, I'm a rock star. All me. You would never do that. I hope you would never do that. Don't do that. You, you would never do that. That would be weird. You would never in a thousand years do that. So why in the world do we take blame for so-and-so failing, so-and-so quitting, so-and-so saying no, so-and-so not losing weight on your product, so-and-so not doing very well, not hitting their goal, not reaching that car bonus, not earning that trip. Why do we take that personally? Stop it. Red light. <laughs> Instead, expose them, show them what's available. You show them what's available. You be proof of what is out there for them. Are you a product of your product? Are you a product of your business? The last thing is people can tell when you have belief in what you're saying or not. That may come when you do some deep digging. If you are constantly stuck and not getting ahead and you're like, yeah, the CEO can totally come to my house and follow me around and see what I'm doing because I'm doing everything right and this whole red light, green light thing, I'm doing all the green light and I'm not doing any of the red light and I'm doing it. If you're still stuck, but you still think you're doing all that stuff, check your belief. Do you really, 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 really in your heart believe in your product, in your business, in your service, in what you're doing? Do you believe in your team? Do you believe in what you offer you, not your sponsor? Do you have what that belief, a sale, a, a recruiting, selling is all simply a transference of your belief to them? That's all it is. So do you have enough belief to transfer it to somebody else? Because people can tell if you don't. People can totally tell if you're like kind of lukewarm about the whole thing. You have to be all in. You have to, like, like Bishop T.D. Jakes is saying, you have to go big in to get big out. Seriously. If you want to withdraw big from your business, you have to deposit big into your business. If you want to withdraw big from your marriage, you have to deposit big into your marriage. Consider it like a bank. When I was a young married, uh, we got married when I was 17, I had a lot to learn. Y'all, like we got in so many fights. I literally threw a book at my husband because I wanted him to read it and he wouldn't. I'm pretty sure that book was like the five love languages. <laughs> and I, li I remember, no, okay, before you guys hate on me, I was literally 17. And I, I literally remember throwing the book across the room at him because he wouldn't read it, you guys. I had a lot to learn about relationships, but the stuff that I've learned in relationships applies to your business and network marketing. It applies to sales. It is simply the person behind this computer screen. You guys, every time you send a message, every time you post on Facebook, every time you click like on someone's post, every time you comment on somebody's live video, do you realize that is an actual person with a heartbeat on the other end of that screen? They're people. It's just people. That's why I hate the whole phrase, it's a numbers game. No, it's not. It's people. It's not statistics and robots and push a button for A to happen so that B will happen. It's not. It's people. They're human beings. Human beings have, seriously, like just innate needs, innate wants. Everybody wants the same things. Innately, primitively, they all want the same things. They want to know that you care. So if you playing small is self-serving, if you quitting is self-serving, you're always going to be in that space. You ever heard the phrase, wherever you go, there you are? Put an emphasis on you. Wherever you go, there you are. So if what you're doing right now in your business, in your company, in your relationship, it will follow you wherever you go. Wherever you go, there you are, right? So stop playing small. Here's some green light things that I wanna leave you guys with. <clears throat> green light, get out of your head, get into your heart. What can you do that will help other people? 
What will you need to say to someone that can help them? Make a decision, get off the fence. What will you do? If you're out of your head and stop overthinking it and stop hesitating it and stop second guessing yourself, what would your heart do? You already have that little prompting, that little nudge that's like, you should go reach out to that person. You should go follow up with that person. You should hop on that training. You should, whatever, message that person and just tell them simply, nothing, nothing business related. You should say, I really appreciate what you do. I really want you to know, I see you. Do you guys know there are a lot of people who they're really struggling right now and you have influence. You have the ability to communicate with someone across the state, across the world, across the country. You reaching out to someone and saying, I see you and I appreciate you, you have no idea what that could do for somebody. So get out of your head, get into your heart. Green light. Start talking to more people and having more conversations. If you wanna go faster and go bigger in your business, you need to have more conversations with more people. That means you can't stay stuck and get hung up on the people who keep telling you no and keep you know, sidestepping you. You can't stay there because the longer you stay there, the less you're able to get someone's, get into someone's life where they need you to meet them, right? You have to have more conversations with more people. Green light. <laughs> do what you know you need to do. That's a big one for me because like I always, I know, I, you, look, look y'all, if you're on this video, if you've seen my other videos, I've literally told you guys, okay, when you get off this video, go do this. <laughs> you know what you need to do. You show up to the trainings, you read the books, you watch the YouTubes, you dial into your company's calls, you listen to your sponsors, you read their posts, you know some things you need to do that you're probably not doing, go do it. If you even just implemented a fraction of the things that you know what to do, your business will grow. If you start doing, let's, let's take working out as an example. If you just start implementing the thing that you already know to do, avoiding the things, the foods that you know you need to avoid, start eating more of the foods that you know you need to eat, start moving your body, stop sitting down so much, you know, hello, you know what to do. If we just actually did the thing that we know to do, big changes would happen. You don't need to go somewhere else, to a different company, to a different team, to a different whatever. Start over where you are. Okay, my last and final tip with you guys, and this is big. On the days where you're feeling like, I just can't take it, I'm not cut out for this, this is so hard. I'm crying, I'm stressed, my shoulders are clenched, I'm stuck, I've been stuck, my sponsor sucks, my company sucks, my everything is terrible. Don't quit on the bad day, okay? Because that moment, that heat of the moment, it's, an, it's a very emotional decision to decide to quit. Whether we're talking about your business or a relationship or anything, it is an emotionally driven decision most times to quit. And then we usually back it up by logic. Okay, so when someone says, oh, this is the reason I was gonna quit, da, 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 it's usually triggered by some kind of emotion. So before you let that seed plant itself in your mind, don't quit on the bad day. And so this is what I wanna say about that. Would you quit if you just signed up a rock star in your business? Would you still quit? Let's say that person just signed up with you and they're like taking off to the moon and they don't even need you. They're like, yeah, I got this. I'm, I'm a prospecting machine. I got this, it's no big deal. And they're like, you know, oh, objections, no problem. I'm just moving on to the next person. They're like everything you've been praying for. <laughs> if they just signed up with you after, you, let's just say you've been struggling for a year, a year, watching other people have success and you're not watching other people on the stage and you're not, watching people with their kudos graphics and oh, you won the trip and you're not. Bad day after bad day after bad day after bad day. Would you still quit if a rock star signed up with you and took off this morning? Would you still quit today? If the answer is, well, no, of course not. If I had a total rock star rocking it, no, of course I wouldn't quit. Then it's not time to quit. 
Do you see? If your emotion has been driven by someone else's lack of success, that's not on you. You still have the power to change it. If your company or your team is good enough to stay in when a rock star joins you and blows it up, then it's good enough to stay in when it's a struggle. Sometimes you just simply have to ride that struggle bus until you can get off at the next stop by not staying stuck by yourself. Reach out, get unstuck, right? You don't need to stay on the struggle bus forever, but sometimes that's just a part of the journey. Every single person, I guarantee you, every single person, I saw Angel Fletcher on here, every single person who has ever had success in this type of business or in your business, if you're not in network marketing, every single person who has had success in your industry, I guarantee you 100%, no way that this is a lie, I guarantee you they have been on the struggle bus at some point. Promise. So the decision is don't quit on a bad day. If you wouldn't quit on a good day, you don't need to quit, right? Okay, all right, you guys, um, that is what I had to share with you guys. I am so appreciate you guys sharing this video and commenting and saying hi. If you are new to my videos, just type new below or just say something. I'd love to give you a shout out and say hi. If you shared, please let me know that too. It doesn't tell me. Um, when I'm live, if you have shared this video, if you found this valuable, definitely pass this along. I just feel like there's people out there who need this encouragement. I feel like there's probably people who follow you who need the encouragement. So share this out if you want to be that person to kind of be the catalyst for a ripple effect. Um, that's what I try to do for you guys. And I will share here down below. I'll put the link um, probably probably tomorrow. I put the link for the um, Bishop T.D. Jakes video. It was so good. So good. It's an hour. I know it's going to be an hour out of your life, but you need to take that hour out of your life. It'll be hugely impactful. Journal about it. Write notes about it. That's what I had my team do um, today. It was just seriously the bomb. It was so good. So I'll put that um, down in the comments for you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on another video. Love you guys. Bye.